Oh, the sounds of summer in Texas. Welcome on back to the channel, y'all. We are gonna be doing something wild today, and we're gonna be trying elk tongue for the first time. I just got back from LFD's house and I was dropping off some last minute tackle. He's making the drive all the way up to Canada. I'm gonna fly up to meet him. That trip is amazing. It's our annual Canada trip. We're gonna be going after walleyes and crappies and, and smallmouth and, and perch and all that fun stuff and beating this Texas weather. So you guys stay tuned. And speaking of tackle and dads, big sale going on at googasquad.com right now. It's not too late to get your dad something keep them in the dangle. Maybe get a little something for yourself. Use my promo code LFG on top of the discounts we already got going on there. Get yourself a good deal. So that'll be linked down below. Father's Day sale happening now. And while I was over there, I was getting some meat out of uh, a couple of my deep freezers that I keep over at my dad's. Cycling through, it's that time of year. You gotta, you know, pick out some of the old meat, getting ready for the new season's harvest. And I was getting some burger meat out. Uh, some deer burger meat to, to cook on the grill tonight. We got some friends coming over. And then I noticed this package and it said tongue on it. And I said, oh yeah, that's my bull elk tongue that I've saved. It's been in there for a couple years. I've been wanting to try it. It's time to cycle through some old meat and we're gonna be trying it today. And really my only reference on eating tongue is when I used to live in San Antonio and I would sometimes get the get tacos at the local taco trucks and they would have lingua, which is tongue in Spanish. And the, they were actually really good. And I preferred it a lot of times that when I went to the taco trucks. So what I'm gonna try to do is emulate some of the tacos that I had down there in San Antonio and use this elk tongue and see how it turns out. This is, this might be a little weird. Oh my gosh, it feels, feels like a tongue. That definitely feels like a tongue. Look at that bad boy. A couple years in the freezer, it still looks uh, pretty interesting, I would say. All right, we're gonna give this thing a rinse. Maybe this guy was licking up some, some elderberries in his last days, who knows. Yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna get some of this mountain dirt off of here. A little bit of dirt, don't hurt. All right, it's time to get cranking on this tongue. So first of all, let's have a look at the tongue after it has been sitting, sitting in a little bit of vinegar and water for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna take this out. Lay that down, look at that bad boy. My goodness, look at the taste buds, the buds. Now what's interesting is, um, the taste buds don't taste good to you. So we're going to, after we cook this, take that off. We're gonna put some of these uh, chilies in here, um, whole clove of garlic, uh, some bay leaves, we've got some cloves here, and then we've got uh, some, some chili powder. Can't forget this ingredient right here, this, this uh, chipotle, uh, basically like smashed chilies in adobo sauce. I was at Flair's place one time and he cooked, it was something nasty, I can forget. It was like a raccoon or some sort of creature. I didn't really want to eat. But he cooked it in this adobo stuff and it was like amazing, it had really good flavor. So I'm hoping that this is gonna add, add some pop. I'm gonna throw it in this Instapot and that that's what's gonna do the magic. Um, for about an hour, this thing is going to break down. Pot, it's got a preheat to build up some pressure and then it starts cooking and then I've got it set for an hour and then after that I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the adobo paste with the chilies and then let it simmer for a little bit longer
Okay, moment of truth here. Our Instapot has turned off. I think we still have a lot of pressure in here to deal with. Gotta let some steam out. <laughs> uh, Careful there. <laughs> uh, there we go. So this pressure cooked for about an hour, and I'm gonna let uh, let the pressure out, and then I'm gonna attempt to look at it and see if the skin looks ready to take off. If the if the uh, the taste buds and all that come off real real well, then that's how we know we were Ew. cooked. Like that, you can see the taste buds. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You should. Did you not feel it? No, I tried to stay away from it. <laughs> Although I will say it actually smells amazing. Well, I, put, I look at, oh yeah. Yeah, the skin is kind of, or the taste buds and stuff are kind of white. You can see. Ew. You know what I mean? Like that whole thing is just the tongue? That whole thing is the tongue. That's right. So, I mean, the sauce, every, it smells great, like you said. So, I'm going to um, put it back in a bowl, put some cold water on it so I can handle it and then we'll try to uh, take the skin off and then I'm gonna take the adobo, chop it up, see what it looks like. We're gonna put it back in there and, and let it just kind of simmer in the, uh, in the chipotle pepper sauces. Tongue removal. Look at that. God, that looks... I know it looks hideous. <laughs> I'm just not gonna say anything. <laughs> No, it looks hideous. We'll let that sit there for a little bit. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. It looks like some sort of creature in there, you know. But if uh, if the skin peels off, it's, it looks like it's going to. Yep. We'll let it cool for like five minutes. Take the skin off, and then we'll get in there with a knife, and start chopping, see how tender it is. Supposedly, tongue is very tender after it's been pressure cooked. So we'll find out. OSG just had a great idea while wow, this is cooling. You act as if that's a surprise. <laughs> I'm full of great ideas. So take some of the, ooh, steamy. The, the garlic and the peppers, and a little bit of juice, put it in a food processor, blend it up and make like a sauce. Mm -hmm. Add the adobo in there. And then we've got, we've got like a really nice hearty red sauce and just let, um, we're gonna chop that up and let it simmer in there for a little bit. Uh, and maybe it'll come out really tight. You're gonna try this, right? You got to. All right, let's drain some water here. That was just to uh, help cool it off. Now let's try to take the skin off. Oh yeah, it's super tender. Get in here. Get in here and look at this. My stomach is kind of on edge now. Really? <laughs> okay, now, once I get this off though, this means that it's cooked. It's coming off real easily. It's like very tender in there. It is, an, it's an interesting texture. Look at that. Aren't your taste buds just watering? Can't say they are. <laughs> well, these are. Yeah. Look at those taste buds. All right, this is coming off real easily. So now that it is, uh, we'll put this on the chopping block. Oh yeah, yeah, delicious looking meat. Look how tender it is. Oh my goodness. That looks like chalk. This might be a delicacy, guys. Might be a delicacy. So I'll take off all the little nasty uh, taste bud parts and we're left with the muscle underneath. Now we'll just get a knife and we'll start chopping it up. Let's see what this looks like. So I imagine this is like a really clean meat to be honest though, like, yeah. there's not like, can a tongue get infected? Can a tongue have like worms like the rest of? 
I, you know? I mean, I guess it could be like, like any meat, you know, but oh my gosh, this is super tender. But you know, like if an animal gets worms or anything, it's not on its tongue. No. So maybe it is a super clean meat. It's, it's kind of like, uh, it's like gelatinous too. Super tender. It's hard to describe. Like I've had beef tongue and this, like already cutting it, it, se it seems like it's going to be the same sort of texture. You know, when you, when you cook like a roast or something, it gets like, just fall apart. Mm -hmm. This sort of feels like that, but it's just a little bit more fatty. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised, my dear. Do you still think I'm trying it? I still think you're trying it. <laughs> I am not trying that thing. I'm not. You're not trying that thing? Nope. That's okay. You know what? Daddy I'm not. and his buddy that hunts, we will enjoy this. And uh, you guys don't have to try it, but I think you would be missing out. All right, so we'll sort of just cube that up, chop it. Yeah, it is. It's gonna make some good taco meat. If you slice it up for a year or so, super tender. Now I feel like it's it's only it's only right that I eat a bite right now. You know, before before taco. Well, now you washed off all the sauce when you put it in your bowl. I did. I did, so this is going to be just like Bland. raw tongue here. Not raw, but you get what I'm saying. Let's get a nice, nice piece here. That looks good. Nope. <laughs> Drop a piece of my shoe. I'm not seeing any excitement. Wow. Oh. That's really good. Really? It's super tender. It's like one of the most tender meats. We'll put this in a bowl and we'll make the uh, the pasty sauce stuff. Put this in here. This is going to be one of the best tacos ever. Woo! All right. I'm just kind of grabbing. What kind of peppers are these? Um, Do you know what you got? Yeah, they are the... Cascaval, Cascavel chilies. I don't know that I'm gonna add the bay leaf in there. No, just, like... yeah, just do the garlic and, and the some peppers. of the juice. And then we'll yep. put some of that adobo in there. Yes. So this is what my dad does when he makes um, like a shredded beef taco. He adds a lot of that juice in there, blends it all up. That's good, that's good. And then we're gonna add this. So that garlic that I put in there is now nice and soft. Same with those peppers. Oh yeah. Woo! Chili and adobo. There we go. Is that pretty pungent? It's not as pungent as I thought it was gonna be. Yes, I mean, so. it's got it's got some spice. Oh yeah, it smells sweet. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. All right. Oh! Uh oh. Uh oh. Coming out. That's, That's you got it locked in. It's locked and loaded, but why is it doing that? Okay, OSG. After a little switch up from her, uh, yeah. for other one, she went to her classic Vitamix. Just can't go wrong. Got that for her for Christmas like mm. ten years ago. <laughs> Still rocking. We're gonna put the. The tongue in back into the Instapot and put some of that delicious juice in there. Just enough to keep it frothy. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we will put that just on warm back on the crock pot.
right, y'all, this is where the butter meets the cream, right here. Ooh. We got flip, we're almost ready. Simultaneously, OSG is making a peach crisp. I'm a lucky man, I'm a lucky man. So we've also sliced up or diced up some fresh white onion and some fresh cilantro. Going traditional style with that. So the lingua tacos that I had in San Antonio, they didn't have any sort of red like pepper sauce. They were basically just the, just the tongue with some of these fresh ingredients. I wanted to add the extra pepper sauce just because I had already cooked it in the flavors and Steph knew how to, to make that sort of sauce. And I want her to try it too, because maybe she might say, hey, go get another one of those elk. It's gonna do it. Just one little scooper, fresh white onion, a little bit more, and fresh cilantro, a little bit of lime here, guys. Woo, baby. Oh, this is bringing back some memories right here. This looks awesome. Check this out. All right, y'all, moment of truth. Let's see if I can emulate what I've had in the past that I, that I liked with elk tongue. Not beef tongue, but elk tongue. Just looks awesome. Look at that. Oh, man. Doubled up on the corn tort. Juices are flowing in here. Unreal. Unreal. Oh my gosh. Guys, this, this is incredible. This is the best taco I think I've ever made. The, the tongue has a a unique property to it that I haven't experienced in other organ meats or anything where it's sort of like tender and fatty, but not off putting like a, like a fatty part of a brisket. It just sort of melts in your mouth. Golly, that is good. A little bit of spice, a little bit of spice from the peppers, but it's not too bad. This is, this is just amazing. I cannot wait to get Stephanie's reaction. We got to make her one of these. You know, my buddy's coming over later. He's had a lot of wild game meats. I think he's gonna be shocked at this one. I'm not kidding when I say that's that's one of the best wild game dishes that I've that I've ever made. And that has been sitting in my freezer for two years. Fresh onion for the crunch. Okay. The cilantro to add that freshness, the lime. I'm telling you, mm. you will be shocked. You're going to be like, what is this? What is this delicious meat? Okay. <laughs> you know, this is, this is, I feel like this is kind of common, but I, I got tricked into this by somebody. So somebody it? ordered me a taco it. and didn't tell me what it was. And I tried it and I go, oh, this is really good. What is this? And I go, oh, that's lingua. I was like, oh, Lingua? What's lingua? <laughs> oh, I know it's, immediately when you said tongue. lingua tacos. I was like, tongue. It's tongue. Look at this. We got a nice, perfect little char browning on Stephanie's taco. Double it up. All right. Double it up is key. We're not going to give her too much. I don't want to freak her out. Don't freak me out. Get some of the sauce off there. Okay, we'll give you just a tad bit more. Just why am I so scared to try this? I shouldn't be this scared, but I'm scared. You, you really, you're gonna love it, I'm telling you. That flavor is outstanding. Flavors. Hi. Flavors are outstanding. Take another bite, give me, give me your thoughts on the texture of the meat. You can give us your full, honest review. Honestly, it tastes like shredded beef. Sh really good. Or it like feels like shredded beef. Texture. I thought I, th I think the texture is unique. No, no big deal. I mean, 
It's not what I thought it would be. I thought it would be like gummy and chewy. Not at all. No. It's not at all gummy or chewy. Okay. I'll hand it to you. It's good. Okay. But I don't know that I would order it at a restaurant. Why though? <laughs> Why though? If, if it's that good? Like what's off-putting about it to you? Just knowing it's a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's just you know, that's conditioning. Mm -hmm. That's that is. societal conditioning is all that is. I see you going back for more bites, so you're not off put by it that much. Like, oh, well, the taste is like amazing. Brisket. Yeah, like, the taste is amazing. The texture to me is is like a brisket, like a more tender brisket, and incredibly tender. I know, it's just so many thoughts going through my head. <laughs> Remember, we took the part that's like the taste buds and all that off. This is like that's the muscle. That's true. It's not like you're eating the, the skin portion. That's true. I don't know. It's a little strange. <sighs> Sorry, potty training our son right now. He did good. It's a little strange, but I will, I'll give you a... <laughs> 9.5 out of 10 okay. on the taste. Okay, 9.5. It's, it's great. It's uh, There's also like a, a pop of spice, but it's not overpowering. Let me get in there because I don't, until you really see it up close, it is kind of hard to understand. That looks like a shredded beef. I mean, yep. But like this over here was a little squishy. Like that, w that was a little too much for me. Okay. But like this right here, that looks like a shredded beef. Can you see like the... 100%. Oh yeah, look at it. Just fall apart. Yeah. That's a shredded, that's a, that's shredded beef for sure. But this one was a little too squishy. Strange. If, if you don't hunt and you're not getting wild tongues, you can get tongues and they're pretty daggum cheap. You can find them at different markets. But if you guys are hunters, which a lot of you that watch this channel are, you may want to try this, especially elk y'all. That elk tongue is incredible. And it just, it just, it will blow you away if you've never had tongue before. So, when you're cleaning your animals, always good to use as most of the animal as you can. I try to do that here, and I try to let the, the let the family experience everything that I do too. I think this one here is just giving me the go ahead to go on another elk hunt. All right, so we got elk burgers on the grill. One of my hunting buddies is coming over with his fam. He's in town. We're gonna have some elk burgers for the kids and all that, but I want him to try these elk tongue tacos and see what he thinks. Dude, go for it. All right, let's see. Elk tongue tacos. How'd you get it so tender? Now, if you didn't know any better, what would you, like, what would be your second guess on meat, like, what that is? I don't know, it's really good, but I would think it was beef, honestly. It tastes like a, just like a stewed beef, almost. It's really, really good. Paige, you want to try it? Really hot. <laughs> you like it? Tastes like beef. Tastes like beef? It's really good. Well done, Justin, well done. Yes. All right, that gives us an excuse to get more elk tongues. All right, y'all, like my buddy JT said, how'd you get it so tender? It wasn't really me. I mean, I used the pressure cooker, but it's, it's just the tongue. So I was blown away by this. I honestly think the ones that I made with the elk were better than the ones that I had back in the day in San Antonio, and I will be keeping more tongues on my wild game harvest. And right now I'm gathering up my last minute things to take to Canada to go fishing, guys. I'm literally jumping on a plane here, here very soon. And um, I, those videos I'm, I'm so excited about. So you guys stay tuned for the, for the great Northern trip. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. And I will see you guys on the next adventure.